If body fat is such a heavy contributor to insulin resistance, how does it cause it? I just want to go through a brief primer on that just to help you better understand the, the purpose of the rest of the talk. Within um, the realm of fat cells in the body, as fat mass is growing, it's actually growing usually through one of two ways, and in some instances, both. Um, and so one of two ways. The first one being hypertrophy of each individual fat cell, and the second being hyperplasia, which is when the fat cell size is staying generally the same, but the fat cells multiply to help share the metabolic burden. So hypertrophy is when the number of fat cells is generally quite set, it's static, but each fat cell is bearing that burden and it's getting bigger and bigger. In contrast, hyperplasia, if fat tissue is being stimulated to grow, it will maybe get modestly bigger and then it will multiply. And so it starts to recruit help to carry the load. There are two problems with hypertrophic fat gain. The first one, and, and this is, both of these are actually quite complicated ideas, um, but I'm hoping that I can convey them in the simplest possible way. So the first problem with the hypertrophic fat cell is that it starts to run out of room. It's essentially like a metabolic hotel that has no vacancy. Now, let's come back, let's leave that analogy um, behind for just a moment and come right back to the fat cell. So insulin stimulates adipocyte, which is fat cell growth. It largely does this, and we'll revisit this in a moment, by inhibiting the breakdown of fat with a generally modest influence of pushing in more fat. So that making the fat cell grow, inhibiting the breakdown. But when the fat cell is undergoing such substantial hypertrophy, it begins to reach a point of maximum dimension. It's like a water balloon that we've filled so much that if we put any more in, it's going to pop. Now, in this case, it's like a water balloon where we can't totally turn off the faucet. And so rather than have the water balloon pop, we just make one teeny little hole and allow it to start leaking out. That's what starts to happen in the hypertrophic fat cell. It becomes resistant to insulin's efforts to force it to hold on to the fat in order to prevent further growth. So it's a, it's a survival mechanism. So the, the hypertrophic fat cell tells insulin, insulin, you want me to continue to grow? I can't. I will literally pop because a membrane has, uh, it has a limited capacity to continue to grow. Like a, like a water balloon has a limited capacity to continue to fill. And so the fat cell becomes insulin resistant to prevent further growth. Now, the second problem with hypertrophic adipocytes is that they start to suffocate. Or to use a more cellular term, they begin to experience hypoxia. Now, it's a little known fact of cell biology that a cell must be within just a few microns of a capillary. And a capillary is the smallest functional unit of a blood vessel, of a cardiovascular system. It is at the capillaries where we exchange stuff with cells and tissues. That's where we're giving out oxygen, taking in CO2 into the blood, giving nutrients, taking in metabolites. It only happens at the capillary, not the arteries before it, not the veins after it, or any of the um, smaller structures in between, only the capillaries. So a cell must be very, very close to a capillary to allow all of this exchange to continue to survive, including getting oxygen. Now, if you have small fat cells, that's no problem, like I show at the bottom. They're well within this generally 50 micron range of the ca distance of the capillary. However, fat cells are so completely unique compared to other cell types, it can expand to more than 10 times its volume as it starts to undergo hypertrophy. Now you have a fat cell whose very diameter is so substantial that it puts even itself, let alone any neighboring fat cell, much too far from the capillary. So now you have capillaries whose distance is too great, uh, or fat cells, hypertrophic fat cells whose distance is too great. As they've undergone hypertrophy, they've pushed themselves further and further from the capillary, from the life-giving blood. And now they've become hypoxic. They're suffocating. And the fat cell, however, wants to survive, and it has so many tricks. The fat cells are so complicated. Um, we look at them as just energy storage, and they do so much more than that, including sensing hypoxia 
and responding to that hypoxia by releasing pro-inflammatory cytokines. So the hypertrophic fat cell will say, I'm suffocating, I need to correct this by stimulating the growth of new blood vessels. And I'm going to do this by flooding the system with pro-inflammatory proteins because some of them will in fact induce the growth of new vessels, thereby correcting the hypoxia. Now unfortunately, these two things that the hypertrophic fat cells do to survive end up creating so much of the metabolic mayhem that we see throughout the rest of the body. So the rest of the body is just suffering as an innocent bystander, all while the fat cell is just trying to survive.